Alright, today I'll be taking a look at the Silverline DIN standard engineer set square, 75mm uh, one. I know a few people out there have been looking for uh, a decent engineer set square. They buy a lot of this cheap uh, stuff now and they are, um, you know, end up being junk and they just have to throw them away. They're not usable. A lot of DIY and uh, carpenters squares, you know, are not. Obviously, you want them as square as possible, but, you know, they're not up to the standard of an engineer square. It just to be bang on. So these silver line ones, they are cheap. But they uh, they do have them in um, the DIN standard, so I thought we'd take a look at those. Okay, today we'll be taking a look at the Silverline Engineer Squares. In this case, this is the 75mm version, the small but tiny little one. I thought we'd take a look at that first. So, uh, like I say, a lot of people out there have been trying to find, um, getting into engineering and things like that. They're trying to find themselves uh, some squares and... Um, don't seem to be able to find any decent ones or they're struggling to find any um, decent ones that are in the, even in the second hand market you have to be careful of those because you don't know in industry somebody dropped it from the uh, from the top um, stairs in, 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 the in the factory plant and it's hit the deck and as you can see most squares are two pieces that have been fused together um, in a right angle uh, 90 degrees so um, you know if you drop that from a up from a, a staircase or a balcony in a in a factory plant and it hits the floor um, one end first you know it, it could you could knock it out of alignment so um, there's always that kind of thing you don't know how they've been treated second hand stuff as well so there's always uh, you know a risk there but then again if it's a good tool maker or something like that he should have kept his tools in uh, good quality but you never know um, it might not be coming from a tool maker it might just be coming from somebody that kept it in the shed for all sorts of, uh, of things so um, we take a look on the back like I say a lot of people have been buying uh, a lot of the cheap a lot of cheap import um, set squares engineer set squares but I'll say engineer squares because they are different to uh, they might look the same and do the same thing as a carpenter's and a general DIY square, but they have to be bang on for uh, engineering because you are, uh, you know, making metallic components, things like that. So, um, so we'll have a look at this. Obviously, it is silver lines so that is guaranteed forever if you go and register online and you have your uh, invoice or receipt um, to scan through. Um, you can you can guarantee that forever. So the reason why we've picked these up is because they are supposed to be manufactured to the DIN 8751 standard. So you're not really um, taking too much of a gamble. They should be at that standard, so they should be okay for the money. Also, I did talk before about more, one of my work toolboxes kept being broken into and finding certain things that went missing. Um, this, the general basic squares were one of them things that I found later on that went missing. I did still have my combination square which can also be used as a, a regular 90 degree uh, engineer square which is what I generally tended to use anyway um, so that um, I, that kind of slipped by me but yeah they pinch my uh, squares out of there so I thought well, well I'll pick a few of these up and see if they actually are uh, decent enough for the job now to, nowadays you do get beveled what they call beveled squares which is basically like um, a square made out of um, all-in-one piece of material it's been machined or manufactured out of an all-in-one piece of material at a right angle whereas most squares are um, you know two pieces joined together at a right angle as you can see the seam there there's this top piece here and then you've got like the handle piece here um, and they've both been fused together and it's, it's, it's that making sure that that is that especially for engineering purposes that that is bang on 90 degrees um, square um, whereas some DIY I'll, I'll grab a DIY square in a minute but uh, some DIY squares might be ever so slightly out but for carpentry and DIY work you know uh, what it looks like to the naked eye they're usually okay but uh, a lot of the cheap engineering squares that are sold out there a lot of people are left with junk because they're not good enough to do the actual job so um, so what does it say here hardened steel blade you just zoom in 
hardened steel blade, accurate on inside and outside edges, precision ground for accuracy, manufactured to DIN 875-1, so there it is you see, manufactured to DIN 875-1, that is the reason why we're taking a look at these today, and obviously it's a 75mm version, they do do different sizes in this exact same range. Um, so I'll get this now the one thing I will note is silver line I think you um, I think you should have uh, made the, the case a little bit longer and covered this end because like I've just talked about before I mean on the rack it would be fine but I'm on about in transport and things like that um, if this dangling piece here which is the main measuring piece that you use well not measuring well yeah, you measure the angle, don't you? So it's a measuring tool in a way. Um, it's, you see it's dangling there and it's two pieces. Like I said to you before about dropping it from a height. Um, you know, if that's going to get knocked about on tr in transit, where, wherever it's going, wherever tool shops, it's from the warehouses and things like that, and they're being knocked about and in the back of the van, you run the risk of knocking, you know, knocking it out of alignment. Whereas if that case was covered the whole thing then nothing really could have happened too much to it but as it's dangling there like that that's the only thing that concerns me it has been covered in like a tape um, and I, su I suppose there's like an like an oily substance under there as well to keep it all from uh, from from rusting and things like that but um, because of that I'll switch the video off or I'll open it up and then we'll uh, th then I'll take a look okay now those um, little sellotaped uh, pieces that were on there they just actually came and slid straight off uh, like that so you've not really got nothing to worry about with them they do just come straight off once you open the um, the case now I did say to you before that engineering uh, or engineer squares are a lot more accurate or they need to be a lot more accurate than a basic square or a carpenter square or a DIY square this is uh, an Aldi work zone uh, one an example that I use for basic um, DIY or woodwork carpentry work carpentry work anything like that that I need to use now this one actually testing uh, testing it on this this is um, a step block that I made that I machined some years ago it's been machined it's got an absolute right angle there and there square and actually funnily, funnily enough holding this to this and holding it up to the light um, it's actually this one's actually good enough it's this, this one's actually bang on and it's okay but the only thing that you have to think about with these is that they are they are very flexible um, in this end as well you see that uh, twangs a bit like a ruler and bends a bit like a ruler so you know uh, not quite the same uh, kind of thing good enough for woodwork and DIY work obviously with uh, when it comes to engineering it's a lot thicker on the blade and it doesn't bend at all it's very it's very stiff and very solid um, as it as it has to be and again again using this um, using this block holding it right into the um, the handle part it's bang on square same again that side it is bang on square holding it up to the light as well you can see that it's bang on square so um, I will say that these are uh, for the money. I think this one was about th about three pound fifty, a little bit under that, about three forty five, something like that, around that kind of uh, around that kind of price point. And it does it does exactly what it says on the tin, and that's probably because of the DIN um, the DIN eight seven five slash one standards that it, engineering standards that it is manufactured to which means that it does have to uh, live up to uh, expectations there 
Um, it did come with a bit of um, oil on it, or, or like um, a lubricant on there that's to stop it from um, speckling up with rust. So I don't know how it's gonna, you know, deal with that. There is some some staining on the metal. I'm not sure if that's actually uh, rust or not, but uh, so I don't know how that's that how that would fare when it comes to that uh, aspect of things take a look at the actual um, piece itself like I say these are um, a two piece the standard classic two piece uh, set square and nowadays you can get the beveled type I think I saw a beveled type about this kind of size, or, or it could have been even a tiny little bit smaller, about a 50, 50 millimeter. Um, I think that was beveled. I think that was about the same price, about three pound fifty. But at least you know, at least with this one here anyway, that the silver line um, range of set squares manufactured to the uh, the DIN 875.1. That, that's the important thing. They do do a range of different sizes, but just as long as you make sure they've all got that DIN 875-1 standard uh, on there on the packet, and you should get yourself um, a, a very usable set square, um, classic two-piece style uh, set square. Be brilliant for uh, any apprentices and things like that starting out. You know, uh, you really do have the. Um, the look of the drawer at the minute with, with a lot of things that are usable and are very very good at a cheap price as long as you've got to keep your eye out for them um, I suppose it's people like me willing to risk it that, to find that out on, on places like this but um, you uh, you certainly uh, got yourself um, got yourself uh, a good deal with this one yeah so uh, it's worth it's worth a couple of quid for a definite if your apprentice starting out you know uh, you really uh, you really looked out at the minute at this point in time uh, with a lot of cheap stuff available that's definitely good enough to use.